We're going to get it together in a minute. All right. Galatians 5, 22, 23, the New Living Translation says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. I told you last week that fruit means fruit means uh, um, a character, the character of Christ. He produces this type of fruit in our lives. He produces this type of fruit in our lives when we allow him to, when we work with him. When we work with the Spirit of the living God, he will cultivate this type of fruit or this type of character in your life. And that is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these. The word peace comes from the Greek word uh, irony. Or uh, yeah, irony. I think that's how, that's how I pronounce that. Irony. So it is Greek equivalent for the Hebrew word shalom. I know if you heard the word shalom before. Uh, many of you've heard the word shalom before, which expressed the idea of wholeness, completeness, or calmness in the soul that is unaffected by outward circumstances or pressures. The word irony, um, or irony. I'm sorry, irony strongly suggests the rule of order in the place of chaos. And so this word, again, strongly suggests that there should be order in the place of chaos. Where is that order at? That order is in your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions. God would give you order in your soul in the midst of chaos, in the midst of chaos. When a person is dominated by irony or peace, he has calm inner stability that results in the ability to conduct himself peacefully, even in the midst of circumstances that would normally be very nerve wracking, traumatic, or upsetting. When you have the peace of God, none of this stuff moves you. <clears throat> none of this stuff moves you. Okay, so this type of peace is supernatural peace that comes from God. Jesus already told us this in John 14 and 27. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it fear. As you can see in this passage of scripture, Jesus is the one who gives his followers this peace or shalom. This is the type of peace that the Bible speaks about uh, that surpasses all understanding. Philippians 4 and 7 says it like this, and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. The peace that passes all understanding means when, when the believer encounters hardships, pressures of life, nerve-wracking or traumatic event, their reaction to these things won't have the power to cause them to react irrationally, but instead they will conduct themselves Sales peacefully. Why? Because they know that the Prince of Peace is in full control. You will have peace when you know that God is in full control. You won't act out of character when you know that God is in full control. You won't act hysterically when you know, when you understand, and when you have believed that God is in full control. All right. So Verse uh, slide number seven, the peace that surpasses understanding also means that how the believer conduct themselves in, un in this untoward and untoward situations is beyond human comprehension. I'm going to say that again. The peace that surpasses all understanding, it means this is how the believer conduct it, how the believer conduct themselves when, when they are in untoward or tough situation. It's beyond human comprehension and reason. Why? It's because it is it doesn't come from them. It comes from him. It is a supernatural peace. And I'm sure those of you that have been walking with Christ for a while, when you've been in tough situations and tough circumstances, you have experienced that supernatural peace that come over you, even in the midst of turmoil, even in the midst of the world seemingly turned upside down, even in the midst of struggles, even in the midst of having gone, going without and lacking, you still had that peace that you knew that God was going to come through for you. That's the peace that Jesus gives you in your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions for you and I to understand that he will not leave us, nor will he forsake us. Watch this now. In other words, it is only God who can bring you comfort and peace in the middle of a storm. That's so good right there. If we go back and re 
and read verse 6 of Philippians 4, it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. So verse 6 says, don't, Paul gives us a command here, don't be anxious, don't be anxious. I don't want to get ahead of myself because I already wrote all this stuff down and i'm just gonna stick with the slides how about that if the lord says the same so it is obvious that the peace of god is preceded by prayer supplication and thanksgiving did you catch that pattern in verse six he said first of all don't be anxious or don't worry second of all this is what you do you pray in every situation and then he says you petition god and then you give him thanks <laughs> he says so these three things don't be anxious for things first number one don't be anxious number two this is what you need to do. If you feel anxiety coming upon you, pray and make your petitions to God and then give him thanks. In other words, this type of peace is born out of a, out of a developing relationship with Jesus. When we continue to develop our relationship with the Lord, our hearts begins to fully understand that he is who he says he is. And he, watch this now. So, uh, so, so born out of that, we gained the understanding that no matter what I, in, I encounter, God will always be my peace, my refuge, my fortress, and my rock. I don't care what happens, who comes, who goes, uh, who's here, who's not here. God will always be my peace. Uh, he will always be my refuge, my fortress, and my rock. Listen to this right here. This is this is this this is one of the things that the devil wants to do. That the enemy wants to do in our lives. He wants to destroy or disturb your peace because he understands this. When your peace is disturbed, then your faith cannot grow. Your faith will not flourish. Your faith will not flourish. Why? Because you begin to worry. Worry does not bring God glory. Worry shows that, I'm going to show you in the next slide, worry shows that we are not fully, our hearts are, have not been settled and fully dependent on God to do what he says he will do. All right. So I got a long way to go. Short time again. So the writer says in verse seven, that the peace of God will guard your heart, meaning the peace of God will protect your heart from fear and doubt. But you have to go back to verse number six now and implement verse number six. Don't be anxious. Then you pray. Then you show your, then you present your petitions to God and then you give him thanks. He said, a lot of the times we go through some really tough situations. If we're not careful, we can let our guard down and allow doubt and fear and unbelief to creep in. Now, how do we know when we doubt? How we do, how do we know when we doubt and allow fear and unbelief to creep in? The answer to that is when we don't respond to the word of God as we should. When we don't respond to the word of God as we should, should, then that's when the oh, that's when the door can be opened to allow doubt and unbelief to come in. When doubt and unbelief comes in, that ties basically ties God's hand because the Bible says this. Uh, somebody can find it in the scripture and put it in the chat. The Bible says that Jesus went to a place, but he could not do many works there because of their unbelief. He went to a place. He could not do many healings there. He could not do many deliverances there. He could not perform many miracles there because the people did not believe. Your unbelief will stop God in his tracks. Your unbelief will prevent God from operating in your life like he wants to. So he needs us to believe and have faith. If you read throughout the old, especially in the book of John, if you read throughout the entire, uh, the gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and count how many times that Jesus said, only believe. Only believe and you will see the hand of God. Only believe and you will see miracles of God. So again, preceded by peace is a command for all believers. Paul said, verse six, don't have anxiety. In other words, don't worry. Worrying, worrying is a destroyer of peace. Tell me who, how many of, 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 of you guys are on here? Mark, Mark six, verse five to six, that scripture. Thank you, Constance. How many of us, there's 19, 20 people in the room right now. How many of us on here have had peace and worried at the same time? Mm -hmm. I'll wait. So peace is essentially the absence of worry. Worry is this. Listen what worry is. Uh, this is this is the revelation that the Lord gave me, I believe. Worry is simply us saying, I want God to do it 
but I really don't believe he will. That's when worrying creeps in. So in my mind, this is a part of worrying. I'm trying to figure out how I am going to answer my own prayer. Mm, that's worrying. But when you have peace, you pray it and believe it and leave it. Oh, say that again. You, When you have peace, you pray it, believe it, and leave it. And thank God that he, he, will, he will make uh, it make he will come through in our lives, and because I don't have the supernatural means uh, to make it come to pass, I become anxious because I know that the situation that I'm praying about it is too much for me to handle. So therefore, I become anxious. What is anxious or anxiety? Anxiety is worrying about how you're going to get, get something done in the future. You're worrying about an outcome of something that haven't and it hasn't even happened yet. You're worrying about the outcome. You're thinking about the outcome. And most of the time, it's about a negative outcome, which causes you, us, to have anxiety. But Paul says to us, to contest that worry, you need to pray. Whenever you feel like the worrying is creeping up on you, that's a good opportunity for us to fall upon our knees and begin to pray. But not only pray, pray with supplication. Supplication of prayers are prayers that are less general and more specific to what your desires and needs are. A more intense prayer for a specific request. See, we cannot be afraid to come to God. The Bible said, come to him. Come to him. all you that labor and are heavy laden. He says, come to him. The Bible says, come boldly before the throne of grace that me that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. We should come to God. When, and this, again, let's go back and look at this one more time. He says, Paul says us to contest, contest that worry with prayer. And then, but not only that, pray specifically for what you want God to do. Pray specifically. No general prayers when we're in this position right here. This is, you see, God has given us, he, he will give us peace when we pray, God, I want this particular thing to happen. I'm praying about this. I'm praying about it, whatever the specific things is, the specific things are uh, to what your desires and needs are. Watch this now. And he says, be intense with it. Be intense with your prayer. So think about this. Think about that you have a bill that you need to, to, to pay, but you lack the resources to pay that bill. Think about how intense it would be for you and what you what uh, uh for for uh, for you to, when you're asking somebody that you know have the means to uh to 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 meet your needs. How intense would you be when, when you know that that person has a has a good heart and that they they don't mind giving, but at the same time you know that they that you have to ask them, how intense would you be? Or would you let pride get in the way? Can I give you a scripture? Y'all look this one up too. It's a scripture in the Bible that talks about, I think it's in Luke chapter seven, that talks about Jesus is giving a parable. He talks about a man who had a child, who has his family in, in the, his family and they're in the, in, in, at home in the middle of the night and they are, are asleep. But then his friend comes by, knocks on the door and his friend says to him, look, I know you have some bread in there. I have just some people that came, my relatives showed up and I need some, I, I, I need to borrow some bread for you. But the but the friend says, no, man, I'm not going to get up out of the bed and wake my family up just to give you some bread. But the other friend was like, I'm not going to leave because I know you have what I need. And that's the intensity that God wants us to have. I'm not going to go anywhere until you bless me. Jacob says to, when he wrestled with the angel, he wrestled with him all night. And he said, I won't let you go until you bless me. And that's the intensity that God wants us to have when we pray, when we're praying specifically for things. He says, I want you to be intense with me. Why? The, the, why does he want us to be intense? He wants us to be intense because your intensity in prayer, listen, it, it marks the level or the, the, the intensity of your faith. And God always responds to faith. Listen, then he says, after you pray, pray specifically and earnestly, be thankful. 
He says, be thankful. There are so many scriptures on the topic of being thankful to God. I'm just going to give you a couple, two or three right here. First Thessalonians 5, verse 16 to 18 says, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God for for you in Christ Jesus. First Chronicles 16, verse 34 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his, the Bible, th- the King James ver- Version says, For his mercy endures forever. Psalms 95, verse 1 says, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. And 2 Corinthians 9, verse 15 says, Thanks be to God for his indescribable gifts. So God wants us to always give thanks. So one of the reasons why we give thanks is because it is the ultimate demonstration of trust. Mm, mm, mm. So when we, when, 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 when we thank someone for something that they haven't even begun to do for you, you are showing them that you fully trust in their ability to come through for you. Many times, Many times uh, people will call uh, a lot of times and not, not as much as I would like, but a lot of times people will call and say, can you come cut my grass? I said, yeah, I can be there on Thursday to cut your grass. And today is the day is Monday. I'm, I can be there on Thursday to cut your grass. And the first thing, usually the first thing that they will say out of their mouth, oh, I thank you. And I appreciate you. I haven't even begun to do the work. It's, 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 it's three or four days down the road before I am there to come complete the work, but they are already thanking me. Why? Because they trust that I have the ability to come through for them. And this is what Thanksgiving does. Thanksgiving to God tells him that we trust him. And it also, it more than, more, more than uh, anything else, it, 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 it solidify within you that you trust God to come through for you. This is why it is vitally important for us as believers to always give God thanks before, doing, and after our prayers and petitions to him. Now I know why the Spirit of God calls, us, calls Paul to write this portion of Scripture. When we follow this pattern of not becoming anxious and worrying, praying with intense prayer, praying specifically, and giving God thanks Peace, in turn, will be our portion. I'm going to say that part one more time. I hope y'all are getting this. See, the reason why the Spirit of God calls the Apostle Paul to write this scripture that I believe, he says, when we follow this pattern of rejecting anxiousness or anxiety with prayer, rejecting uh, worrying with prayer and with intense prayer and specific prayer and then giving God thanks. Watch this. Peace then will be our portion. We will receive the peace of God. When we gain the peace of God because the need that I'm praying about has been given over to him to figure out. Watch this. Again, we gain the peace of God because the need that I am praying about has been given over to God to figure out. And I trust him to come through for me. And now that God has been made aware of my need, my trust in him to do what only he can do brings me peace. Yes, Lord. This thing, oh, if 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 you noticed last week uh, about joy and about love, this thing uh, hangs on faith in God. And he is saying, when you have faith in God, you will have joy. When you have faith in God, you will have love. When you have faith in God, you will have peace. I am further at peace because I know that he has my best interests at heart. I know that he will never leave me comfortless. I know that he will never leave or forsake me. This, my brothers and sisters, is the peace of God. All right, a couple more scripts, I mean, a couple more slides here. So everyone seeks the feeling of peace of mind. Who doesn't want peace? Many try to find peace by traveling. This is our summary, traveling to the place close to nature with an eager hope that the atmosphere of peacefulness would usher them into the mood of calmness and peace of mind. Still, others enroll in courses of self-meditation that promises promises to teach uh, techniques to provide them with inner peace and wellness. Some seek professional psychiatric help. Sadly, when overcome with anxiety, many suffer panic, panic attacks and resort to prescribed antidepressant medications that leads to 
uh, an even more damaging effect on their mental health. They become dependent and addicted to drug usage, which is detrimental to their emotional and mental well-being. Everyone experiences worry or anxiety from time to time for different reasons. This is not a mental disease. However, we are exposed to the spasm of anxiety every day and every hour. Just look at the daily news. We hear of terrorism. We hear of worldwide protests and rebellion, wars and rumors of war. All of this is going, going on as we speak. Earthquakes and disastrous uh, uh, calamities, the threat of our civil liberties being dissolved right before our eyes. But as Christians, these catastrophes even only, oh, uh, these cat uh, cat these catastrophic events, let me slow down a little bit. These catastrophic events only remind us that we are living in the end times. We who are believers live and walk in the peace of God, and we are not moved by external issues or circumstances. Why? Because we have staked our life and livelihood on Jesus. Jesus is our peace. I pray tonight that if you uh, don't have the peace of God, you are a believer, but you are still struggling with worrying. You are still struggling with anxiety. You are still struggling about worrying about the future. How are you going to take care of this? How are you going to take care of that? How are you going to pay your bills? How, 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 uh, is a, is a loved one is going to get, uh, be healed or delivered or so forth and so on. Again, a lot of times, a lot, a lot of times, a lot of people on here are not worried about themselves. They're worried about their loved one. They're worried about their son or their daughter, their mother or their father. Can I tell you, this is how you have peace. Give it to Jesus. Pray about it. Pray earnestly about it. Pray specifically about it and give it to Jesus. And so Lord, I give it to you and help me not to take it back. Help me not to, 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 to worry anymore. I give this to you. And if you have to do that every day, if you have to say, God, I give it to you every day, 10 times a day, until you finally do it, then you do it. Until you finally receive the peace of God, then you do it. Father God, I thank you and I praise you and I magnify you for walking us through the fruit of the Spirit, for showing us how to have peace in our lives. In this life, the rambunctiousness uh, of this life, if that's a word, the, the, the turmoil, the anxiety that we face on a daily basis before we even get out of the bed, we're thinking about, oh, what I got to do when I get to work and what I, this and so forth. So our minds are not at peace. God, we want our minds to be at peace so we can fully experience who you are. Are. So we thank you tonight for peace. I pray peace over every person that's listening and that will hear this message about peace in the name of Jesus. Supernatural peace, the peace of God, and God, that our faith will flourish like never before. This is our prayer tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. All right, let me stop the recording real quick.